Jacob deGrom is one of the most dominant, flamethrowing starting pitchers in recent history, and this season is no different. He ranks among the top 1% of all pitchers in nearly every single statistical category you can think of, and he's on pace to have an even better year than his back-to-back -back Cy Young seasons in 2018 and 2019. So in today's video, we are going to dive into deGrom's arsenal in an attempt to quantify what makes him so good. But before we jump into it guys, if you enjoy the content you're seeing on this channel and you want to continue to see more of it, it'd mean a lot if you'd click that subscribe button. I'm a numbers guy, and only about 30% of the people who watch these videos are actually subscribed, so show your support by clicking the subscribe button down below. To begin with, let's paint a picture of deGrom's arsenal changes from 2020 to 2021 to see if there are any things that may stand out. In 2020, deGrom threw his fastball most, at around a 45% clip. And I would too if my fastball averaged nearly 99 miles per hour over the course of a full season. His slider was his next most utilized pitch, which came in at an absurd 93 miles per hour. Then his changeup at 91 was thrown 17% of the time, and finally a curveball which he threw sparingly at 3% of the time. In 2021, he hasn't added a new pitch, or really altered the movement profiles of those pitches like some of the other pitchers we've covered on the channel before. So what has changed? For starters, his fastball on the season is averaging 99.2 miles per hour, and he is the only starter to have thrown over 100 pitches over 100 miles per hour. You can see that throughout DeGrom's career, he's only thrown harder and harder year after year. Over the last five seasons, he's made the jump from averaging 94 miles per hour on the fastball to nearly 100 miles per hour. That's crazy. Because of this, he throws this pitch at an insane amount at 63%, which he can do because he throws harder than everybody else out there. As you can tell from this year-to-year -year pitch usage chart, his fastball has typically sat in about the 45% usage rate. So, a rate of 63% is a massive jump, especially when we add in the league average fastball usage percentage that has been steadily declining over the past decade. So this is a big deal. As for the rest of his arsenal, obviously we will notice that the rest of his pitches will have gone down slightly, but that makes sense because of the increased usage rate of his fastball. The slider has gone down slightly, the changeup has taken a massive hit from 17% to just over 10%, and the curveball has only been thrown three times on the year. So when looking at the numbers here, the most notable change is DeGrom's increased usage of his fastball. I mentioned briefly earlier that his movement profiles haven't changed much, but let's take a quick look to show you what I'm talking about. This is a chart of DeGrom's 2020 movement profiles from Brooks Baseball, and then we can overlay his 2021 numbers to see if we notice anything that has changed. For me, nothing really drastic has changed at all. The fastball cluster is right on top of each other, and the changeup slider and curveball are about the same as well. So his recent success is less about changing what tools he has in his toolbox, and more about utilizing the tools to the best of their capabilities. Let me explain. Here is a heat map of where DeGrom has thrown all of his pitches in 2020. You can see that he uses his fastball up in the zone, his slider low and away, and his changeup just below the zone. But if we hop over to his 2021 location plots, we can see a few subtle changes. The first being is that he's still throwing his fastball up in the zone, but is now being located away to a right-handed hitter much more often, or to his glove side. The slider is also being thrown a bit lower, which is garnering a higher chase percentage than he's seen in his career. And to show you why, here's a chart of where DeGrom has garnered swing and misses on the year. The objective for any pitcher should be to capitalize on what's working and eliminate what's not. So up and away to righties for the fastball and low and away for the slider are working. In contrast, here's where he's allowed base hits. When he leaves pitches over the zone, that's when hitters do damage, which isn't happening very often to be fair. Seeing images like these are incredibly useful for athletes when beginning to understand where they should be utilizing their stuff in the zone. Alright, so we've covered everything in DeGrom's arsenal, but what other metrics have made him so successful this year? I listed out these earlier, but many of these stats are great indicators of how a pitcher performs in-game over the course of a season. Comparing items like ERA to expected ERA gives you an idea of where a pitcher may end up. So seeing a split between the two may indicate DeGrom is due for some regression as the season progresses. But it's also important to note that this regression would still be a career best for him, which is saying a lot for a guy with two Cy Youngs over the past three seasons. If we take a look at his percentile rankings from Baseball Savant, you'll notice a pretty neat trend. And yeah, it's that he's in the top 2% for nearly every single category out there. In short, the guy is absolutely dominating hitters at a rate that is insane even for him. The fact that he has continued to get better and better year after year is incredible. 
Going back to what we just covered in his pitch location plots, we'll notice that DeGrom is ranked in the 100th percentile for chase rate, which is a big reason for his success. His fastball plays, but his slider specifically is playing off of it very well. To this point in the season, DeGrom ranks first in both the highest chase rate among starting pitchers and the highest chase rate on breaking pitches among starting pitchers as well. His stuff is gross, and he's throwing it to where guys can't hit it, and they're still swinging. To recap, Jacob deGrom is going to go down as an all-time great. Watching him continue to dominate year after year has been incredibly entertaining to follow, and his stuff is only getting better. The application of data in today's game plays a big role in helping guys determine where their individual stuff may play best, and in looking into the numbers that we've seen today, it's clear that deGrom knows where his stuff plays, thanks to the different data collection methods like TrackMan. If you enjoyed today's video and want to see more like it, make sure you let me know in the comments down below. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.